week's episode of Gundam Build Fighters Try, Gunpla Academy goes up against Granada Academy and Lucas Nemesis. This episode was pretty freaking legendary in my humble opinion, and definitely one of my favorite battles from the second season of Gundam Build Fighters. And the first half was pretty much just all build up, getting ready for the big battle in the second half of the episode, which was just full on action and never let up the entire time. What I really loved about the first half of the episode though, is they keep bringing up the open tournament. This is something that's been mentioned in passing in a couple of episodes, and this leads me to believe there is going Going to be a third season of the show which is going to bring in some new characters and old characters from the first season and from this season which frankly I think would be incredible because we get to see a lot of Tatsuya Yuki but we still haven't even seen Sei and Reiji yet and that's still kind of bugging me not to mention where's Domo and Kashu? Another scene that I really loved involved a Doe Saga. When they're announcing the brackets for the final four, everybody starts sizing each other up and it just goes on and on and on. And then a Doe Saga finally walks out and he's like, look, the strong survive, the weak lose. Simple as that. Freaking Thunderdome. Six man enter, three man leave. The battle this week is definitely the highlight of this week's episode and definitely one of my favorite battles of the entire series. My favorite thing about the battle this week though is that one team didn't just completely dominate over the other. They were trading blows left and right and you didn't really even know who was going to win until the post credit scene of this week's episode. So let's talk about that Crossbone Gundam X1 Full Cloth. This thing is sleek. This thing is sexy, and at first it almost seems like it's a straight build of the actual model itself, but it does have some interesting modifications. One that shows itself later in the episode when it actually launches its core fighter. But before we get to that, let's talk about that crossbow. That thing is freaking awesome. Not only does it look cool, but it has this really great ability. When he's fighting a Doe Saga at the very beginning of the episode, he's firing his fangs all over the place, and then he fires this one shot, which actually locks onto every single fang, and then this beam just splits out and fires into multiple directions, destroying all of the fangs. But that's not the only ability he has, because at this point of the episode, a Doe Saga just gets pissed off. He rips off the cloak, you see both of the hands come out, and that's when he finally starts to go at him full force. And it's at this point that I really fell in love with the character of Ado Saga. He's so incredibly awesome. And this is like the first battle that we've really seen him in that he can go completely full on out and just go crazy. And this leads to probably the next part of the episode that I thought was really clever, where it almost looks like Lucas Nemesis is going to be defeated. He's running away from Gunpla Academy. He's dodging all of these big freaking giant beam blasts from the transient Gundam, which has this big lance, which just looks, oh, so good. This is mecha porn. Lucas Nemesis actually used that attack to his advantage because it left a huge hole in the meteor and he fires this core fighter through it and it ends up going right into the G-portent which luckily puts up its shields at the last second but it busts through and even fires these little like beam blades right at it. It's really impressive. How about the one move where the Crossbone Gundam was actually blocking both the Transient Gundam and Gundam the End at the same time. It blocked the, uh, the big Transient Gundam with its hand and then as soon as Gundam the End was getting ready to attack it this blade came out from under its foot and he ended up stabbing a Doe Saga right in the stomach. At the very end of the episode, the Gunpla Academy figures out how Lucas Nemesis is powering up his Gundam and that's because his teammates are supplying him, so they decide to take them out with extreme prejudice. I especially love that the Gundam The End's chest actually transforms into a massive face very similar to something from Gurren Lagann and ends up biting off the freaking head of the Giradoga. Not to be outdone, the G-Portent snipes the other Giradoga right through the head all the way down into the ground with a nice big explosion, ending it with the Transient Gundam fighting against the Crossbone Gundam. And what I love most about this is that the Crossbone Gundam probably has one of the coolest beam savers I've ever seen from Mobile Suit Gundam. It splits off into multiple directions. It almost looks like a massive saw. And at the very end of the episode, both of them charge into each other. There's a massive explosion. And if you stick around at the post credit scene, you'll get to see that it almost seems like Lucas Nemesis has actually won. The transient Gundam is there. It's sitting on its knee. And the Crossbone Gundam is standing all in its glory. But then Lucas realizes that he actually lost as the Crossbone Gundam crumbles to the ground. So what's the rundown on this week's episode of Gundam Build Fighters Try? This was just a good action episode of the series. It didn't disappoint, really. Uh, the first half of the episode, I really liked, actually. At first, I thought it was kind of boring, but the more they keep mentioning this open tournament, 
the more I get excited for that because it just means we're probably going to get a third season in the show. And frankly, I think that would be awesome because there's just so many interesting characters in this series that they could bring back for another open tournament as well as introducing some new characters. And I still think... We need to see some more explanation from what happened at the end of the last season. Like, they need to go back to Reiji. We need to figure out really what the deal with Aryan is. And uh, I even loved how in this episode, Lucas Nemesis mentioned Isla Yurkiainen in passing. I thought that was really cool. And I just want to see Say. I can't believe we're so far into the series and we really haven't even seen any of those old characters yet. And yet we still see Tatsuyuki all the freaking time. Despite that, I love that they're mentioning that open tournament because that means they can pretty much bring in anybody from all over the world. They can go crazy with it. I really think that would be like kind of their opportunity to go with like an even longer version of the series because the possibilities are really endless with an open tournament. You know, they can just go nuts with it. But without a doubt, the battle this week is the highlight. It's so awesome. It was done so well, and it just had some great momentum going for it. It had some really good artwork and some animation, and Ado Saga was just really the one who impressed me the most this week. And probably that's just because he's so freaking badass. I just really love that character a lot. But uh, then you have uh, Wilfred Kijima, who, you know, I like his character because unlike the first season, uh, you know, Tatsuyuki was sort of like forced to be a bad guy at the very end. And in this one, there really isn't like a villain in the show. And I really don't think a show needs a villain to be successful. I mean, there needs to be conflict at some points. But uh, I love the fact that this is like a good earnest like competition at this point. And God, I cannot wait to see the next episode because the Gundam try on three and it's going to be the fateful battle between Yuma and between Minato. It's definitely going to be fantastic. The uh, preview showed that they're definitely going to have some pretty intense scenes going into that episode. Um, but yeah, this week's episode was just great. Um, a little disappointed again that uh, it's another one of those matches where you got like the one guy who's like really powerful and the two sidekicks who don't really do anything. It's kind of similar to uh, what's going to actually happen in next week's episode. And uh, they're actually trying to do something a little more important with that story, I think. There's a, a little bit of subtlety to that one scene where Minato is working on the Gundam Tryon 3 and he's mentioning that they're, he's going to make them the best team in Japan. And the team doesn't actually look all that happy about that. They almost seem a little conflicted. Like, it almost seems as if Minato is just here for his rivalry with Yuma. He doesn't really care about the team. He's basically sort of like trying to just use them as his vehicle to actually battle against Yuma. And if that's actually what's going on, that's going to add another layer of shit to Minato. But I still think he's a pretty interesting character and I'm still in love with the Gundam Tryon 3, which I still think is my favorite Gunpla from the series thus far. However, this week's episode was really great. The Gundam The End I thought was really cool. There was a lot of great scenes with that. The Gundam Crossbow and X1 Full Cloth did not disappoint in all of its cool abilities and all of the cool techniques that it used. Lucas Nemesis was a wild card character, and I didn't expect that he was going to be like the final antagonist slash opponent for the series, and it's only because in the intro, and uh, they've been like heavily showing that Gunpla Academy is going to be like the final obstacle for Team Tri Fighters, which, you know, next week's episode is going to be fun, but there's no way that Minato's team is going to win unless the series is going to try and do something so incredibly bold and like risky, but that's not going to happen. It's going to be Team Tri Fighters going up against the Gunpla Academy, but despite that, this show's a lot of fun. You know, especially for old school Gundam fans who've watched every series because it's just got a lot of fan service. And despite that, a lot of the Gunpla scene this week are like brand new or at least extremely modified versions of other Gundams. Like Gundam The End is probably the most unique Gundam I've seen from the show because, I mean, you could you could try to like pick and choose what body parts it's from, like what Gunpla it originally originated from. But uh, it looks completely original to me, and that just, I think, really shows the skills of a Dose Saga. Or maybe it was actually Shia who actually built it for him under his specifications. But I love everything about that mobile suit, the cloth, the freaking gun, which even the crossbone Gundam actually stole his gun in this week's episode. That was a really crazy scene. I loved how he was fighting both of them at once. That was really great. So this was just... An amazingly high quality episode of Gun and Build Fighters. It's nothing groundbreaking in any sense, but it's just damned fun. And it's awesome. And if you love mecha anime and you're a big fan of freaking Gundam, you gotta check out this show. I can't recommend it enough. It's just great. I look forward to it every week, and it's really sad to know that in a couple of weeks it is going to be gone. But hopefully, mentioning this open tournament thing, we're going to get a third season. I would definitely endorse it. I think it would be awesome. So, I like this episode. I liked it a lot. 
I have really no complaints with it. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. Check it out, guys. Really good episode. Thank you guys for watching my review. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And before you guys leave, please tell me what you thought about this week's episode of Gundam Build Fighters Try in the comments section below. What did you think of the battle between Lucas Nemesis and the Gunpla Academy? Did you have a favorite scene from this week's episode? How do you predict this season is going to end? And if there was a third season, what would you want to see? Remember guys, if you have not subscribed to our channel, make sure and do that by clicking on our channel icon right up cha. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter, and you should also check out our brand new podcast series, The Powerful Nerdcast. I'll put a link for that in the very end of the video and in the description box below. Thank you guys for watching. Super Kami Guru 9000. Out.